Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to another Real Madrid preview. How fast things are moving. I mean, look, we've got a game in every what three or four days, as we have been saying. Um, so these reviews, previews are coming in and coming out thick and fast. We move swiftly back to that Chelsea win following the kind of victory a 2 their win away I gave my review on that go and check it out if you guys haven't already but we move on to the big one away at Stamford Bridge 2 nil up from the first leg and I'm a bit disappointed with the first leg we won but Real Madrid didn't go in in the first leg with that let's step our opponent mentality it was like you know what let's just play second gear I suppose and let's just see how it goes let's not go all out let's okay maybe let's step the opponent but let's not twist it last season Real Madrid were out against PSG against Chelsea and against Manchester City but what happened the opponent didn't finish us we weren't finished and maybe this could be a sort of inspiration and motivation for Chelsea fans and players and Lampard realistically Chelsea probably won't make the comeback but you never know you never know and we'll talk more about it First leg, I give my thoughts on it. I won't talk too much about it, but I want to recap what happened in that first leg. Two goals, Benzema tap in really, but it was good play, good positioning. Asensio shot corner kick, technique Asensio edge of the box, outside the box actually. Good goal beyond Kepa. So the first two goals of this game, of this tie, have been scored by Real Madrid a clean sheet. Nothing suggests that Chelsea could come back, really. However, let's have a look. So, why Chelsea could make a comeback? One, Stamford Bridge. You know, it's after all, it's still Stamford Bridge. Um, I'll give a second reason. And I would say, one, it's a Champions League. Because we don't know what's going to happen. And another reason I'll give, actually, is I genuinely do believe that because there is nothing to lose the Chelsea are probably going to finish 11th or 12th there's nothing to lose for Chelsea to then just switch on and give their 101% to then just throw everything throw their kitchen sink you know what, throw your bathroom at us that's probably what they're going to do so I expect a Chelsea side they will be very attacking so maybe you could see like a 3 4 3 sort of type of formation. I suppose they went for 3 5 2 against us at the Bernabeu to be a bit more precautionary. And I think they will go a bit, a bit more offensive, trying to capitalize every chance they get. And we'll talk more about the Chelsea side of things later on. But I'll give you those three reasons as why I think Chelsea could be, you know, a side that could knock us up, could come back. I'll give you a couple of reasons why it won't happen. First up is Real Madrid, simple as that. Second up, we have a two goal lead. And third, Chelsea don't score many goals to suggest that they can come back. Now, Lampard has come in for, was it, three games? Now, the Brighton game has just gone over, right? So, Wolves ability came in and then Real Madrid and then Brighton first three games in charge um, he's considered five goals and has only scored one against Brighton and also lack of deflection three losses in a row for his first three games five goals considered five two against Brighton two against Real Madrid one against Wolves of course that suggests that where are the goals going to come from and are they going to be able to, be, to even defend 
So, it's a very mixed one. Which, I will give you my score prediction later on. So, bear that in mind, it's a very mixed opinion and a very mixed feeling going to this game. And then remember it, bookmark it to the end of the video when I do give you my prediction. Because the prediction is key. Because, like I said at the start, we didn't finish them. We didn't twist the knife in. And two goals realistically isn't that difficult. So, we'll see my prediction. Because it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Compared to the first leg, the first leg you can just go Bernabeu, Real Madrid, Chelsea are on shit form. So I'm saying. And then just go 3-1 or 2-0 or something along those lines. But this is a bit more in-depth. So, a bit more tanking. But let's get into the lineup. Starting 11, I will go with Corso and Go. The back line is probably our strongest back five at the moment. Mandy is out. You could play Alaba left back with the centre back. That's what I thought we were going to do in the first leg. We didn't. Kamavinga was rested against Alex before he came on. Probably going to come on. Um, actually, no. He's probably going to start and then come off. Sorry. And then Alaba was rested the whole game, so he's fit. He's fresh. He's ready. He'll be replaced really good, in my opinion. There's two changes there. Kamavinga for Nacho, Alaba for Rudiger. Minitao, just let him play. And Carvajal, who was also rested for Vasquez, is going to play. One problem is Mudrik. If he does play, if Chelsea do throw in, they throw their kitchen sink. Mudrik is going to be torturing Carvajal if he does get a chance. Even if he does come on. Midfield trio, let's move on now. You go to experience. Now, Cruz had a knock against Cadiz. He wasn't selected for that reason. Maybe he might not be ready. But I just have a feeling that he'll be back. And I just have a feeling that this three in the midfield is going to be huge. Now, similarly, you could see Modric, Cruz, Valverde. Now, don't rule that out because I believe that's what happened in the first leg. In hindsight, I should have put Valverde in, but I feel like we, we did that in the first leg to try to get a goal, to try to score goals. Now that we're tuning up, maybe it's time to think more like, let's try to defend a bit, not sit back and play 10 men at the back with one striker, but try to not go as offensive as we were in the first leg, because there's no need to. If it's a nil-nil or one off, we are true. So just don't risk it. Just don't risk it. And if Cruz isn't available, Modric, Tramani, Valverde probably as your midfield trio. So you got the two experienced guys in there. You got a defensive player in there. I think it's the perfect combination. You could have Valverde in there, and what he gives to this team is something that I don't think Tramani gives. Tramani gives a defensive side of things, but Valverde gives that lick. The extra bit of pace that he gives is important. Covering ground, he tracks back, he goes, he's everywhere. Valverde is everywhere on the pitch. So, it's a bit of 50-50, both of their ups and downs. Who are you going to pick? Flip a coin, whoever he lands on, plays I suppose. Um, and then the front three, again, like Cruz, Vinny Jr. was not even in the squad, a bit of knock as well. Again, if he isn't fit, Rodrigo will play on the left, Asensio on the right. But that's depend on Vinny Jr. He's a crucial player because of the chances he creates, um, the goals he scores, it's obviously a huge part. But I think, and of course Rodrigo is a quick player, but if you're Rich James and the news has come out that Vinny is not going to play and they're playing against Rodrigo, wouldn't you be happier? Because, look, Rodrigo isn't a slow player by any means. Of course not, right? But Vinny Jr. exposes threats that Rodrigo doesn't. He's quicker, of course. But I feel like there's just something about him that you would torture James. So I think if you're a VJ to be praying that Vinny Jr. isn't fit 
And if you're going to be playing a game during his phase, and if he's fit, you gotta play him, of course. Of course, you don't want to risk him, you might take him off. But I feel like at least for the first half, you need someone like him there to be posing a big threat at James. So let's hope he's fine. Rodrigo on the right against Kai Pitt on the left was brilliant. By far one of the best players on the pitch. He, in fact, he won the man of the match, I believe. Brilliant player. Again, if he's really in the field, I would happily put Rodrigo on the left, Asensio on the right. And of course, it's Benzema up front, without a question. So this is somewhat what you're looking at for Real Madrid. Now, what are we expecting from Chelsea? So, this is somewhat of an overview. Now, again, you might not be able to see some of the results on the screen, but I'll read it out for you. Let's not go back to the Potter and Bruno Salter days. Let's talk about Lampard's first three games. Um, I kind of want to look at this Brighton game. I have watched the game, but um, I haven't gone in detail. So, it's going to go deflected goal by Gallagher, who considered a header goal to well back, and then a stunning strike from Enciso. Um with the goal so it's interesting because against Real Madrid at the Bernabeu they went for 3-5-2 but then against Brighton they went to a 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3 some would say um, now I expect a 3-4-3 again I think they will try to hit us now look if Chelsea go for a 4 the back I think Real Madrid will actually not mind it even though they are going a bit more forward, offensive, that will mean defensively, you know, it's much more comfortable, I suppose, for us to attack. So I think it's going to be a 3-4-3. Three, three. Kepa will probably play. Of course, true out the red card, which means he's not going to play. But the three center backs is probably going to be, if I'm not wrong, Koulibaly is out, probably. So I, I reckon Chalaba might play. I reckon Fofana might play. And I reckon Thiago Silva might play. Three. I would have said Kukurea if Chua was, didn't get the red. But you have to play Kukurea left back because you've got no one else. If Kukurea was fit, he would play left center back. But he isn't. Uh, but Chua got a red. Sorry. Don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, if Chua didn't get the red, Kukurea would play left center back. Probably. To replace Koulibaly, of course. But... You probably play Chalaba left centre back, or Fofana left centre back. Still by the middle, Chalaba left, Fofana right, I think. This is three centre backs and a keeper. Wing backs, like I said, Kukurea, and I expect Rhys James. Um, I think he was actually um, benched for this one. And then, actually, Zakaria played. He won't play. Um, I think it's going to be. Two in the midfield. I think it's going to be Enzo Fernandez and Angolo Kante as the two midfield. Fernandez is a creative player. People see him as a centre mid, but he arguably is more like a cam, if I'm being honest. So, and then I'll have front three Sterling, Felix, and I reckon he might go Havertz. I think Havertz might play. Look, Mudrick might play. Mudrick, Sterling, Felix. You could see that. You could genuinely see a front three of Mudrick on the left, Felix up top, and Sterling being pushed to the right hand side. He's a very, very versatile player who can play here, 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 even here. Sterling, very versatile player. Mudrick might play to just pose that threat to Carvajal. Um, and whether he does, I'm not too sure. But this would be what I think Chelsea might go. Obviously, this is not a Chelsea you know, preview. Um, this is a Real Madrid preview. But just my opinion and my thoughts. So now we come to the point where I said earlier on, keep that in mind while we were talking about the mixed feelings. And then come all the way back here. Hope I bookmarked it. So. What am I going to predict? It's very difficult. We're at Stamford Bridge. We're away from home. We're playing against a team that have nothing to lose. We're playing against a team that are playing the Champions League. 
have won it two times, starting to lose 11 Premier League, will be going all out. 2 0 down, 2 0, as the commentators would say, is the worst scoreline to be in. And I'm going to go for a 2 2 draw. Now, hear me out, I'll explain why. I think Chelsea might get a good start. I think Chelsea might score early on, maybe in the first 30 minutes. Get themselves a goal, maybe. And it's 2 1. But I think we're going to respond, make it 1 1, and then we go into half time. One off. Coming back out, I think Chelsea will score again in the second half. 2 1 Chelsea, and then the momentum with them. But I just have a feeling that Ramage will respond once again to make it 2 2 and then go through 4 2 and aggregate. That's just my feeling. Of course, it could be a Real Madrid win, it could be a Chelsea win. For all you know, I'm not going to get too arrogant and say Real Madrid will get, dominate them because we're at the Stamford Bridge against a team that learned to lose. This isn't one of those random games against the bottom of the league, you know. So, you know what? Let's actually take this game seriously. Let's take our opponent seriously. We may have won the first leg, but it's always the second leg. And you never know what's going to happen. But let me know what your thoughts are, what will your formation and lineup be down below. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Hit the button to Subscribe to the channel that's on already and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.